Uh, welcome to the Metamat uh, seminar series. So today it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Pavel Belov from St. Petersburg University in Russia. And he's going to talk about longitudinal electromagnetic waves with extremely short wavelengths, which is rather unfamiliar for many of us. So Pavel, it's, it's a pleasure so you can start, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, colleagues and organizers for inviting me and thank you for those who came to listen to the talk. Yeah, unfortunately online um, this times I am indeed from St. Petersburg, Russia, but I'm from not St. Petersburg University, I'm from Itmo University. Uh, and today we indeed will be uh, talking about uh, longitudinal electromagnetic waves uh, in uh, via medium. Uh, most of us know, but I would like to remind, yeah, that actually there is a, a special class of metamaterials, so-called wire metamaterials. Uh, these are media made of wires, and the wires can be uh, really kind of microwave wires, centimeter with centimeter radius. It can be smaller wires for terahertz range with smaller radius. It can be nano. Uh, rods, nano wires for optical range, and actually this uh, kind of uh, metamaterials is still uh, full of surprises. I sincerely, personally believed that most of the effects in the wire metamaterials are already known, at least for quite a while. But uh, surprisingly, in one class of metamaterials, we uh, found a uh, new phenomenon, at least the phenomenon which was not reviewed in our paper dated uh, back to uh, 2012, uh, which you can see at the screen. Uh, so probably some update of the properties of metamaterials is required. Uh, I have to say that actually one dimensional why metamaterials, I indeed studied very deeply in details and uh, I think the most interesting phenomena right now uh, should be observed in two-dimensional and three-dimensional wire media. Uh, over here, you can see that actually uh, many groups uh, separate the media on two classes, basically so-called connected wire media and non-connected wire media. Uh, connected in the title says that the wires which are directed in the different directions, say, for example, along X and along Y, are electrically connected in the location of their cross uh, when they cross each other. And you can have double connected wire medium, you can have triple connected wire medium, uh, depending on uh, how many directions in which the wires can be oriented present in the structure. Uh, Non-connected wire media, uh, our structures, then there is no electrical connections between wires, but wires can still be directed along various directions. Uh, by the way, not necessarily along Cartesian coordinates, X, Y, Z, and also some other directions. Uh, uh, at the beginning, I would like to remind you some basic properties of wire medium because it will be uh, required for understanding of the uh, uh, material which I will be presenting today. Uh, let us start from uh, three-dimensional uh, connected uh, wire medium. It's well known for quite a while material. I'm just showing you the uh, typical uh, geometry from one of the papers of Mario, uh, Silverinia and some discussion diagrams just to illustrate there are many, many uh, uh, papers and works about this, but actually this material has a stop band at low frequencies in uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, photonic crystals uh, in, in, in photonic crystals language. And above plasma frequency, there are some modes which may propagate in uh, this uh, material uh, usually, one of the modes is longitudinal, another is, is, is transverse, and but if you modify, you may have uh, some, some other properties over here as well. But in connected uh, cases, it's usually like this. What is important is, of course, that we have a stop band 
at low frequencies. Uh, and contrary to this, in the case of non-connected wire media, at low frequencies over here, this is uh, uh, this uh, is uh, frequency uh, uh, surfaces. So over here, you have a frequency, the vertical axis, and uh, kx and ky components uh, along uh, these directions. You can see that at low frequencies, there are some modes which can freely propagate through this material uh, nearly in arbitrary direction. This happens because the wires are not connected and there are modes, which looks like transmission line modes, which can uh, pass through this structure of uh, wires. Yeah, uh, actually in, in today, in the whole talk, I will consider wires uh, perfectly conducting and they'll be not discussing any issues of losses uh, in, 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 in my talk. Uh, in the case of 2D non-connected wire medium, uh, there, is a, a, uh, there is a mode with electric field perpendicular to two sets of wires. So basically with electric field along X axis, it's freely propagated through the structure as without polarizing the wires, literally only polarizing the wires across. And this red, uh, dispersion corresponds to uh, hybridized uh, TEM waves. In the case of uh, three dimensional non connected uh, wire medium, there are no uh, TEM waves uh, propagating at low frequencies, and there are only these hybridized TEM waves. And uh, there is certain literature about this. Uh, I was Studying it with Konstantin Simovsky back to uh, 2004, actually quite quite actively. Uh, but today uh, we will be talking about, in a sense, a mixture of these connected and uh, non-connected wire media. Uh, something uh, I would say literally in between. This uh, something which is called interlaced wire metal material. So it consists of uh, two lattices. Uh, each of the lattices is connected three-dimensional uh, wire mesh, wire metal material, but at each of these meshes is located inside of another one. Basically, they are in this sense interlaced. So one is, uh, is, is sitting inside uh, of another inside in the sense that they kind of share internal volume of, of, of the meshes. Uh, there, there are some papers about this, and uh, one of the first papers of uh, Shanghui Fan Group uh, in 2007 uh, actually claimed that because we basically have two conductors inside of these interlaced wire metal materials, you have kind of transmission line mode and the mode which is traveling at low frequencies of this metal material has this symmetry as you can see from the plot from this paper uh, and it's like a tem wave and it's basically looks like uh, uh, a mode of uh, uh, transmission line uh, and uh, but volumetric in a sense so this uh, mode can travel in arbitrary uh, direction, uh, but the structure of the mode is like a structure of the mode inside of coaxial cable. Uh, a little bit in more details, uh, uh, the topic of this interlaced wire medium was touched in the paper of City Chen in Nature Communications uh, in 2018, but in, 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 in both, uh, but in case of a paper of City Chen, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the co-offers consider it the shift between sub lattices. Basically over here, uh, you can see that this blue lattice stands right in the center of red lattice. And this is symmetrical orientation of one lattice with respect to another. So they're shifted by half of the period in all three directions with each other and symmetrically located. Over here in the paper of City Chen, uh, there is uh, uh, in one of the directions, there is a shorter distance between sub lattices. And basically, this means that one lattice is shifted 
uh, to the vector, which is not a half of the period with respect to each other. Uh, in this uh, first uh, paper of Shanghui Fan, the lattices which were studied uh, have different uh, radiuses of the wires. So basically, as you can see over here, because you will repeat this unit cell, uh, the radius of the blue uh, uh, blue wire mesh is two times uh, smaller than radius of red wire mesh. So finally, in all these two papers, which I mentioned by now, the sub lattices are actually not equivalent. Uh, the spoiler is that in this paper, we will consider equivalent lattices uh, uh, symmetrically located with each other. Over in the first paper, uh, this was not the case. Radiuses were different. In the second paper, the locations of uh, 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 meshes were not symmetric. Uh, actually, there is another uh, paper of uh, uh, Mario Silveringer where he also considered uh, interlaced wire medium with different radiuses of the meshes, studied this in, in details, and actually formulated clearly that there is a, a mode at very low frequencies uh, which has a longitudinal uh, polarization. So basically, uh, uh, this was a statement of the paper that you have a plasma frequency and below plasma frequency you have two longitudinal uh, waves. And over here again, the networks were different, the meshes were different, and actually for Mario, uh, it was uh, uh, the reason because his effective medium theory was nicely applicable in the case then ready of wires are uh, different. And uh, I was talking to him privately, personally, and he told that actually something interesting happens if the radiuses are equal, but uh, uh, he don't know what, and his theory is not, not, not really working. I was not was was quite skeptical about this, but actually, as I see right now, it's very very important uh, to understand to consider this case of equal uh, radiuses of the meshes. But uh, let's do everything kind of step by step. I will show you some results of our simulations uh, in order to understand how this system operates a little bit in more details. Over here, this is our unit cell at the left. Again, one mesh, uh, which is done from uh, blue uh, wires. Yeah, another one by red. Of course, we are not colored. This is just for understanding that these are two non-connected meshes. And after that, they form the metamaterial. And uh, uh, these two meshes are shifted uh, with respect to each other by certain shift, uh, the main vector of shift, yeah? So in this sense, they are equivalent, they are equal, they have the same radiuses, but they are located in the different uh, coordinates in space, yeah? So they're shifted uh, with respect to each other. Uh, if you calculate accurately, uh, uh, the dispersion diagram for this metamaterial. We've done this in uh, CST uh, microwave studio. Uh, then you will get exactly uh, the, the results uh, which were presented by Marius Silverinier in his paper uh, in, in 2017. So there is a plasma frequency, there is a branch corresponding to transverse waves above plasma frequency, and there are two longitudinal waves below. And uh, the polarization of the waves can be checked just by calculation of average electrical field, but because main vectors over here can be quite significant, you have to multiply this by exponent, uh, compensating uh, the propagation constant of the, of the wave, of the mode, and we actually 
we are doing this quite actively uh, in, in the works of homogenization of various kinds of metamaterials. And here I refer to, uh, to the paper again of Mario Silveringe, uh, published in 2005, where all, all this theory of homogenization was uh, proposed. Uh, over here, we should have a video. Yeah. Can you see my video? Hopefully, yes. Uh, this video gives us uh, uh, at the left side dispersion diagrams and at the right side isofrequency contours uh, for these metamaterials. And you can see that actually at low frequencies, you can have circular isofrequency contour right around gamma point. Uh, and after that, uh, the data numbers of the mode increase with the increase of the frequency. And at certain moment, uh, the wave vectors becomes comparable with the period. And at certain moment, this isofrequency contour starts to, uh, to touch corners of the brilliant zone. But in my opinion, because uh, we were studying many photonic crystals, this crossing of the uh, border of the brilliant zone is a little bit unusual. Unusual in the sense that actually uh, uh, there is no, uh, so they just cross it without interacting at the interface. And the normal with respect to other frequency contours turns out to be not along the interface of the brilliant zone, which is a little bit unusual. Uh, that's why we decided to uh, take a look at this in, in a little bit uh, more details. And uh, uh, this is actually isofrequency contours at low frequencies already without without video. And uh, they they kind of reproduce what is known in literature in these three papers, which I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, by the way, interestingly, uh, these are these three papers which I have mentioned. They are only three papers uh, which exist by now in the literature, at least I was able to find about interlaced widening. Uh, we, we, we unfortunately searched many, 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 a lot of literature sources. We haven't found any any other resources of information about interlaced widening. Uh, we decided to check what will happen if it will break a symmetry and. Uh, move uh, one of the meshes away from the symmetry point. Uh, in the symmetry case, vector of the shift is half of the period. We decided to change uh, this uh, vector a shift uh, to 0.2, uh, one fifth of the period. And they're shifting one lattice with respect to another uh, uh, by the same numbers in all directions along X, Y, and Z. So basically, one mesh is moved by diagonal with respect to another one. Uh, if you take a look at the dispersion diagrams for this media, at the left side, you see the dispersion diagrams, which I was showing to you already. At the right side, you will see that there is a certain stop band along gamma x direction. And actually, uh, there are two modes over here indeed, they are not touching anymore. And some stop bands at other frequencies appear in, 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 in some other directions. If you draw uh, uh, isofrequency contours for this case, uh, you will find a dramatic difference. Over here at the left side, we have symmetrical case. At the right side, we have asymmetrical case. Uh, the difference in these two is that isofrequency contours in the case of symmetry breaking is actually always across the boundary of ruling zones by normal with respect to the boundary. Yeah, right now they will touch, take a look, yeah? So these points are always normal. Over here uh, for non-connected, uh, for, for, for symmetrical case, there is no such phenomenon. Uh, then we have seen this, then we realized that basically uh, we probably do not understand something until the end, and 
uh, started to think what can be done because this case of isofrequency contours then isofrequency contours are perpendicular to the edges uh, to, 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 to the sides of the brilliant zone it's completely okay for us we have seen this for many photonic crystals at many uh, frequencies for dielectric photonic crystals for different matter materials so on and so forth but uh, then uh, the isofrequencies cross at the boundary this is something strange and actually, we have found an answer. Uh, we have a body uh, centered cubic lattice with equal atoms inside. And actually, for this lattice, when the uh, lattices are exactly the same, actually, the cubic unit cell is not the smallest unit cell of this periodical structure. There is another. Uh, unit cell uh, for the symmetrical case with two times smaller volume, and uh, this uh, unit cell is depicted over here. Uh, you can see, uh, and only part of this meshes, which originally belonged to the cube, starts to uh, be a part of this unit cell. And this is uh, uh, rhombohedral geometry, and uh, of course. Uh, uh, the brewing zone corresponding to this smaller unit cell is greater than the cubic brewing zone, which corresponds to uh, to the cubic unit cell, original one. And this will actually answer all the questions why isofrequency contours behaved uh, so strangely. Uh, if we calculate uh, the dispersion diagrams for interlaced wire medium for correct unit cell, and unit cell is again depicted over here in the slide, then uh, we will see something uh, which uh, usually puzzles uh, the people. Yeah, uh, we see that at low frequencies, there are no waves which uh, originate from gamma point of the building zone. There are some waves which uh, starts and exist at low frequencies in the vicinity of H point without any waves along gamma point. Uh, in the sense of why medium, everything is again the same. You have plasma frequency, you have TM waves above this plasma frequency, and you have longitudinal waves below. But this longitudinal waves, for some reason, uh, starts from very, very low frequencies, starting from zero frequency. And at low frequencies, it has wave vectors uh, uh, corresponding to H point. So basically, it's uh, pi over A, pi over A, in, 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 pi over A or in, in, in one of the directions. Uh, the initial um, idea uh, that when I have seen this, and the co-authors of these works are actually students, my, my student and my PhD student, uh, was the idea that something went wrong and uh, simulations in uh, CST was done incorrectly. We repeated this in COMSOL and in, in, in other solvers, and our simulations were repeated. We've got the same dispersion and uh, if we were drawing isofrequency contours we haven't seen isofrequencies uh, around gamma point we have seen nice circular isofrequencies around h point over here and this just says that at low frequencies uh, the modes in this material dramatically change in space with wave vector equal to 2 pi over a at very, very, very low frequencies. So they have extremely short wave length. And this is interesting. And we were trying to explain how it can be. Uh, over here, thanks to this great work of a uh, group of city chan with John, Henry and other colleagues uh, saying that actually there are special uh, kinds of uh, matter materials which have 
index ellipsoids and arbitrary k points. And actually, uh, this uh, phenomenon is dictated by uh, topology of the networks of connection between these unit cells. Yeah. So the clicks were representing their results for metallic meshes with different geometries. And they have shown that for many different unit cells, uh, you can have at low frequencies uh, the H, uh, the uh, the, the modes, the phase vectors, uh, which starts not from gamma point, but from some other points of the brilliant zone. And explanation of this fact is that actually uh, it's not uh, forbidden to have uh, different potentials for sub lattices. And actually this way you can have uh, uh, quite large wave vectors for variation from this uh, blue cylinder to this red cylinder. Yeah. So actually across this unit cell, you may have dramatic changes of phase of your mode independently on frequency, even at very, very low frequencies. And exactly the same we observed in our case. We took the theory from this Nature Communications paper and applied to our unit cell. Uh, actually, we have two non-connected pieces of metal, uh, blue uh, wire mesh and red wire mesh. And they may have uh, different potentials, say phi 1 and phi 2 from one side. And from the other side, uh, you should have all uh, periodicity requirements fulfilled. So if you have some wave, which is traveling with certain wave vector, uh, it should correspond to block theorem. And you can write down this block theorem, for example, for different phases of this unit cell. One phase, it can be this phase, which is created by vector A1 and A3. In this phase, you have this piece of metal, blue piece of metal showing by error. Hopefully you can see it right now, yeah? And parallel to this, there is another plane which is by periodicity indistinguishable from this plane, but it has a piece of a red wire over here. So basically potentials should be the same, but you have to multiply them by uh, exponent uh, uh, of wave vector uh, multiplied by corresponding period, yeah? In, in, in this particular direction, basically vector between two faces, which uh, moves one face to another, uh, if you solve these equations uh, analytically at low frequencies, you can uh, find what are kx, ky, and kz components of the wave vector which are allowed to propagate uh, through such material. And actually, uh, these are uh, these numbers uh, which never uh, equal to zero simultaneously. So N1, N2, N3 are uh, arbitrary integers. And actually, unit cells, uh, so, sorry, isofrequency contours in uh, uh, these uh, materials, they actually concentrated at low frequencies around some points, like H point, and periodically distributed in reciprocal space. Uh, without gamma point at all, yeah? So in this sense, we have quite good confirmation that phenomena which we observe indeed exist. And in this material, uh, consistent interlaced by medium with equal uh, sub lattices, we do have the waves with very large wave numbers and uh, propagating in, uh, which may propagate only in particular directions in terms of the wave vector either along Y, either along X, or along Z uh, directions. The group velocity can be arbitrary uh, directed, but wave vectors are predominantly along these directions. Uh, the second step was to understand uh, what is polarization of the mode, and we applied uh, exactly the same technique which I was already mentioning, the average uh, numerically calculated electrical field distribution in the unit cell multiplied it by weight function, which corrects uh, the phase change. 
uh, integrated this, and we were amazed by the fact that actually polarization of the mode which we studied is actually also longitudinal uh, at low frequencies, and we even uh, checked how it depends on the frequency. We calculated angle between cake vector and average electrical field, and actually uh, have seen cosine cosine uh, of, 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 of this angle. We have seen that with increase of the frequency, uh, the deviation of this angle from zero is negligibly small. So basically, the numbers of cosine functions are so small that actually it's uh, 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 purely uh, a longitudinal wave up to 2%, I would say that 2% is a deviation from completely longitudinal. And uh, uh, this was interesting for us, and uh, we started to uh, check a little bit deeper what's going on here, because we have new unit cell, uh, which is smaller than the cubic unit cell, which uh, the people studied in the previous uh, papers. And uh, we wanted to come from uh, one unit cell to another to understand what's going on. Uh, in order to understand what's going on with polarization, we decided to calculate uh, polarization of the waves uh, corresponding to the different Brillouin zones. So I can show you the polarization in the first Brillouin zone, but actually there are also uh, kind of uh, polarizations in other Brillouin zones. So it basically corresponds to expansion into the plane waves, but plane waves corresponds to the different uh, Brillouin zones. And we were doing this for cubic unit cell. And what we have seen, actually, uh, we tested the simple matter material, which is not a wire medium, uh, BCC lattice of uh, dielectric spheres with epsilon 10. This is artificial dielectric at low frequencies. And as expected, uh, inside of the gamma point, uh, inside of the first brilliant zone around the gamma point, we've got a maximum of intensity of this polarization of this periodical mode and quite small numbers in all other Brillouin zones. What we obtain, uh, obtained for interlaced wire medium completely puzzled us. We've got zero uh, in the first Brillouin zone or some number which is numerically indistinguishable from zero, but we've got quite large numbers in neighboring ruling zones, for example, the zone which includes H point. Uh, this actually means this is additional confirmation that original mode which is traveling inside of interlaced wire medium is actually this mode with isofrequency around H point because we do see it in, in terms of the intensities or in, even not intensity, amplitudes of the, of, 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 of the expansion of these modes into the plane waves. Um, second thing which we started to, to understand is how we can transform uh, dispersion diagrams and other frequency contours, which we obtained for large unit cell, which is two times larger in volume than the smallest unit cell, to the unit cell of uh, the smallest one, and vice versa. Over here, uh, I, uh, we referred to, uh, to many previous works, in particular work of Geoffroy Larage and uh, Matthias Fink and other, uh, other guys published in, in Nature back 2015. Then uh, they considered uh, periodical lattices arrangements of uh, some scatterers and consider it what will happen with the dispersion of this uh, uh, periodical chain of scatterers. If you start to increase basically period two times by uh, agglomerating this uh, into the pairs, into the dimers, yeah? And if the distance between uh, these unit cells is not equal to half of the period, 
uh, you obtain uh, some dispersion. And uh, if uh, this distance between this pair of scatters is equal to half period, you should reduce this to simple periodical structure. And actually what happens, actually some kind of folding or whatever flipping appears the branch uh, of the wave vector, which corresponds to the large wave vectors, turns uh, and returns back to, to smaller wave vectors. In this particular case, uh, the simple chain of resonance scatterers had a low frequency mode with certain resonance over here, stop band, and after that plasma frequency and plasmonic mode appearing at the upper frequencies. If you have uh, increased period two times, then the, uh, then the structure has backward wave mode uh, in vicinity of the uh, upper bound of the lowest uh, mode. But it's actually something which, uh, which flipped and rotated from higher K vectors. Uh, more accurately in two dimensional case, uh, it can be explained like this. For example, take a look. You have uh, the unit cell, which is uh, uh, small, and calculate uh, the dispersion diagram for this small unit cell. You will have this blue curve, uh, which will last uh, along this gamma x, x, m direction. But as soon as you will start uh, to uh, to consider the same structure as uh, something which has uh, a double periodicity and your unit uh, cell will have uh, two times larger volume, then actually this uh, uh, mode will bend uh, to, 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 to this gamma point and you will get this dispersion. So basically the branches which were originally along XM and along X prime M will happen to be uh, along X prime gamma A and gamma prime M prime. So basically this is transformation, simple, uh, how you can construct your isofrequency contour and actually uh, uh, and dispersion diagrams out of this uh, uh, periodical, uh, okay. If you know uh, the dispersion for small period, you can predict what will be your dispersion for, for the larger period. Uh, and actually the same thing applied for our case, when we identified this new unit cell, uh, which is rhombohedral, and isofrequency contour for this rhombohedral unit cell originates from H point. After that, with increase of the frequency, it reaches plasma frequency. And after that, you have this growth uh, above plasma frequency. Actually, if you transform this to the large unit cell, then unit cells becomes larger, Brillouin zone becomes smaller, and actually these H points bands or flips to the gamma point. And you obtain the other dispersion diagram, which actually was observed and in, 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 in the previous papers, then this large unit cell was considered. And actually this clearly explains what's going on with uh, isofrequency contours. Over here, it's like a origami scheme. So if you have a small unit cell, which is smallest and correct unit cell for, for the lattice, you have isofrequency contours are concentrated around H point. But after that, you have to put this point into the gamma, upper point to the gamma, H point to the gamma, and this point to the gamma as well. And basically by this flipping, you will get this uh, isofrequency contour, which we observed for, uh, uh, for cubic unit cell. So at this point, we realized that we completely understood this strange behavior than our isofrequency contours in original simulations were crossing unusually the boundaries of brilliant zone. And this really kind of helped us to understand what's going on. But at the same time, uh, it again was a confirmation that the true uh, dispersion of the modes in interlaced wire medium corresponds to waves at low frequencies which originate from H point. Um, yeah. Uh, this is this, uh, this uh, isofrequency contours and original uh, true contours are given in, in the color. 
and the gray ones, these are, uh, in a sense, artificial contours. And actually, if you just take a point from this contour and calculate the intensity of electrical field of the mode, which will correspond to this point in, in near the gamma, uh, point, uh, then uh, amplitude will be nearly zero because the most of uh, energy, uh, most of intensity of electric field will correspond to the mode uh, from another brilliant zone near the H point. Uh, over here, we actually for our cells for a group which uh, actively studied special dispersion effects in many metamaterials, we actually realized that we have. Uh, faced a situation of extremely high uh, special dispersion induced anisotropy. Uh, all we know that actually by simple principles at low frequencies, if you have cubicle unit cell, which is isotropic in all the direction, most likely you should have uh, isotropic isofrequencies uh, and isotropic uh, dispersion. But uh, deviations from this isotropic behavior, it's anisotropy uh, detected by special dispersion in natural materials. Uh, it's negligibly small. For example, in table salt and other uh, polar media, usually index of refraction variation along the diagonal and along one of the uh, axes of the Q is uh, not greater than 0.5 to 10, to 10 to the minus 4. Extremely small, but detectable quantities, and this effect is called special dispersion-induced anisotropy. The same effect in the metamaterials made of split ring resonators and uh, ceramic uh, resonance spheres or plasmonic spheres is pronounced more dramatically. We have studied this, but it gives us uh, variation of delta n of index of refraction of about 10 percent, 0.1. In our case of interlaced wire medium, uh, this uh, anisotropy is enormously high because you should have no propagation along gamma m direction and you have propagation along gamma h direction for all frequencies, uh, for all possible low frequencies. So this means that you can vary delta n already kind of 100%. Yeah, so delta n can be equal to one. And uh, we decided to check this because it's very easy. We perform numerical uh, simulations for this interlaced wire medium. We cut uh, the uh, slab out of this uh, interlaced wire medium. I cut it uh, for propagation along gamma X and along gamma M directions, uh, placed periodical boundary conditions where it's necessary. Thickness has certain, uh, the slab has certain thickness. I think it should be about 10 periods. And we numerically calculated transmission coefficient. Uh, what we have obtained, we actually obtained uh, for propagation along gamma X, uh, there uh, we should have uh, isofrequency contour near H point, as it was predicted. And you have some fabricular resonances, not total transmission. Uh, this is this black line, which is, dot, uh, this is mentioned by gamma X. There are fabricular resonances. There is a, a dramatic mismatch with free space because this is an attempt to match transverse wave of the free space with longitudinal wave of uh, interlaced wire medium. Luckily, uh, by the level of minus 40 dB, this matching has happened. And you can see that uh, within very wide frequency range, you can excite uh, this mode. But along gamma and direction, you have a stop band which clearly opens in this particular case when the period is about one centimeter around 11 uh, gigahertz. And this just corresponds in terms of the other frequency contours to the case then instead of stop band in this direction, certain mode starts to uh, interact with free space mode. 
And after that, certain transmission appeared. And this uh, once again confirmed uh, us what we are on the right way of understanding of this very interesting material. Uh, by now, I think uh, there were no attempts to cut it uh, along the gamma M direction somehow by diagonal. And this is, as you can see, quite crucial because waves do not propagate along this direction at low frequencies uh, at all. Uh, another confirmation that this material has interesting properties was also done numerically. We uh, simulated a finite sized block of the uh, matte material and uh, placed a point dipole inside in order to excite the modes of this uh, brick. Yeah, so some modes are traveling uh, to the right, to the left, up and down, a uh, form standing waves. And there is nearly there is no radiation into the free space again because the waves are uh, predominantly longitudinal. Uh, we measure it uh, amplitudes uh, numerically measure it uh, amplitudes and phases of the modes, and we actually have seen at very low frequencies uh, very quickly and rapidly varying fields. Uh, uh, in, in the vicinity of the interfaces of this material. We performed a Fourier transform of these modes. So basically we took a real distribution in at the boundary of this metamaterial block, maybe Fourier transform. And this is what we have observed. Actually, the maxima of the modes uh, or, or, or maxima of the fields corresponds to wave vectors in the vicinity of H point and independently on the frequency. So we have done it for many frequencies and there is, there is no uh, really, uh, there, there are no fields which corresponds to the modes near the gamma point because they just do not exist there or exist in very, very low intensity. Yeah, because uh, you may have something there uh, due to finite size of the of, of the sample. Uh, so over here, I'm coming to conclusions, and actually, uh, the message is that we consider it uh, symmetrical uh, interlaced wire metal materials with two meshes which are symmetrically located with respect to each other, and paired them with uh, shifted uh, geometries. Identified the new unit cell for this symmetrical case, which is rhombohedral. We found the isofrequency contours uh, concentrating around H point at low frequencies and extreme anisotropy at these low frequencies. Uh, these modes are longitudinal, and actually, uh, I believe that this is a really new case of metamaterial extremely specially dispersive. And uh, I'm not quite sure how to deal with it, but it uh, has a very quite, a very large contrast. So it may have very large case. It definitely may have negative refraction and other things. And it definitely supports longitudinal waves, uh, which may have particular applications as well. Uh, if you're interested in more details, I just would like to refer to our uh, first draft, which is uh, uploaded to ArcSeq, the number is over here, and I will be more than happy to answer to your questions if you have any. And thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Pavel, for this uh, very nice talk. So now we have uh, time for questions. So just please, uh, you can, or in the worst case, you can ask the question in the chat.